Hey friends, welcome back to Out of DevOps. Today we're going to talk about init containers. Uh, init containers are a feature of uh, Kubernetes, so we're going to see why we have init containers, uh, what are the most common use cases, and then at the end I'm going to show you um, how I like to use init containers, one of my preferred use cases. So first of all, let's start with uh, what are init containers. So init containers are a special type of containers that we have in our pod specification. So in our pod we have uh, containers and then we have a block where we can specify init containers essentially we can specify the same parameters that we have for uh, standard containers but the difference with with them is that the, the init containers are going to be used before the standard container so when we start our pod the init container will start first and these init containers will uh, are generally used to pre-configure your environment or to configure the parameters or the requirements that are needed for your uh, image. These are quite nice because you can use them to define a contract between the uh, deployers, so whoever is deploying the application in uh, production, and the actual developers that are working at container level. So they can configure the container in a way that they expect something that is pre-configured for them. And then the deployer, so someone else that will take care of the deployment, can uh, um, fulfill that contract and um, make sure in the init containers, all these dependencies are sorted. So um, before we get lost with all these words, let's have a look at the an, act, an actual example. So as you can see here, this is how we specify an init container. So in a standard pod, we have in the spec, we have containers, but we also have the option to specify init containers. So the init containers can run any command and they can initialize the environment. For example, there is Istio that uses init, init containers to configure the IP tables in order to block um, some type of connection and do network magic. So uh, that's where most of the um, magic of service mesh is happening is in the init container. Let's also look at what the init containers can do. So we, we can use the init containers to delay, as we say, the, the standard containers. And uh, these are there are many uh, use cases. For example, we have to wait for a database to be available when we are starting up, or we want to check that to all the dependent services that are needed to bootstrap the service that is in the container are available. So we can have a script that checks that all these things are in place before we start the container. So it's more about splitting the responsibilities because at this point, the developers can declare this is exactly what I need to run my service. And then someone else will make sure that thing is in place before they run. So this is quite useful, especially when you have to start all the services at once after a disaster recovery, uh, because you can specify the sequence by having init containers that check for each other. So you can have an init container that checks for a precondition about other pods running in the cluster or about external services or databases or other things. So now let's have a look at one of the use cases that I, uh, where I use the, this type of container. So uh, the, the use cases where I found them um, extremely useful is when you need to fetch some sort of secret or certificates that needs to be available for the application to in order to start. And um, before all the Vault integration, I used this to fetch secrets from Vault and share the secrets on a shared volume. And uh, by the way, if you are interested on uh, how to share files between containers and you don't know how to use volumes and um, some other tricks, uh, there is another video that I've made about uh, sharing files between containers. Make sure you look in uh, my channel and um, don't forget to subscribe. So back to what we were saying. So what we can do, and I have an example here. So we can have in our init container, we can have a volume mounted. And in that volume, what we can do, we can have the init container that somehow fetches secrets. So it can be through an API or it can be through downloading from a specific place or from a bucket. And we can move all this logic inside the init container so we can reuse the logic instead of pushing developers doing this in uh, their own application we can have the init container that takes care of that and we can reuse that init container this is also extremely useful if we have to change and we are in control of that part because we can just swap the container apply that to all our deployments and we are 
done instead of coordinating with all the, the other teams. One thing that I like to do when, especially when working with secrets, and uh, as I said, this is covered in more details in, uh, in another video, is uh, using shared volumes. So we use a volume type empty deer. For the empty deer, you can specify what is the medium. So in that case, you can use medium memory. So what you're doing here is creating a volume that is completely memory. And one of the advantages of doing this is, is the fact that you are not gonna have files stored on disk. So that's one additional security layer that you have. And uh, apart from the uh, speed that you're gonna have because the file is gonna be memory and is much, much faster than any disk attached to the, to the machine. So this concludes our short discussion about any containers. Hope you find this information useful. If you do, please consider subscribing and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.